Thor Love and Thunder, the fourth film in the Thor franchise and the 29th film in the MCU, is a lot of really good things, but never enough of any of them. I'm Alex, and this is the Mega Dads Review for Thor Love and Thunder. Kids, get the popcorn now. Let me tell you the story of the space viking, Thor Odinson. He was no ordinary man. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. He went from dad bod to god bod. And after all that, he reclaimed his title as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Thor Love and Thunder is the second Thor movie from director Taika Waititi, following up Thor Ragnarok as a case of the parts being greater than their whole. There are three separate stories, Gores, Janes, and Thors, all of which are good, but none of which get enough time to be as meaningful as they could have been. At 119 minutes, Thor Love and Thunder is the shortest MCU film since Ant-Man and Wasp, and I can't believe how it misuses it. With another 20 minutes, the fourth Thor film could have developed its more compelling arcs to their potential. The introduction to Gore the God Butcher is a major highlight and sets the antagonist up with my favorite thing you can give any villain. Valid motivation. Really love the way they introduced Gore. Uh, I think it is a great introduction, one, to the character, and two, just what kind of performance you're going to get out of Christian Bale. And I'm talking this thing is haunted. This is a unhinged, unreal performance from Christian Bale and is worth it just to see that in and of itself. He's every bit a top tier MCU villain, both in performance and overall character. Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman's chemistry has classic rom-com energy. It was great to see the two of them on screen again for the first time since Dark World and to have their relationship recapped since most of it happened off film. Natalie Portman has all her usual affable qualities and plays Foster with a great resolve as her character deals with stage four cancer. Despite her time as the Mighty Thor feeling incredibly rushed, Love and Thunder absolutely nails what an ass kicker she is. I really, really appreciated the way they made sure to recap Thor's losses, you know, because really he is the most developed character in the MCU, and if you disagree with me, you ain't been watching, and that's just facts. Thor Love and Thunder feels like three different movies that just kind of somehow come together, but they don't come together well, where another 30 minutes could have served to give us more of Gore actually doing god butchering, or seeing more of Jane actually go through cancer and like developing more as the mighty Thor. Tessa Thompson takes a back seat throughout most of the movie and she plays Valkyrie with such a great swagger and such great confidence to see her have to kind of like take a back channel back burner role is a shame. It's, it misuses her character and again it plays into all the same things I had where the movie is satisfying and it is fun and it is funny but it could have been so much better than what we actually get. Something about Thor Love and Thunder felt a half step off. Like it lacked that pure heartedness I found in Taika Waititi's other films and shows. The humor didn't always land for me either and where Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder, Thor's very large screaming goats, almost steal the whole picture. The Thor Guardians of the Galaxy pair up felt overly zany in a way that didn't match the tone for the rest of the film. Is it hypocritical to ask for Marvel movies to be shorter, but then complain this one is too short? Another 20 or 30 minutes could have improved so much in this film that feels like it's in such a hurry to get to the next scene. We don't get enough gore, we don't get enough Valkyrie, we don't get enough Mighty Thor, we don't get enough Chris Hemsworth together. It's got a lot of things going on, but it's just so preoccupied and it constantly is just pushing so fast and so forward that the stakes never feel high. You never feel any danger because you never have any time to. Where some of these Marvel Disney Plus shows feel like what it's a two hour movie stretched over six episodes, Thor Love and Thunder feels like six episodes condensed into a two hour movie. For everything Thor Love and Thunder does well, the 29th film in the MCU doesn't do enough of it to fully realize its potential. I think plenty of people will be satisfied, but it's hard to ignore how much feels left on the table. For a standalone movie, it's pretty good. For an MCU movie, it's more of the same. Thor Love and Thunder gets three and a half stars out of five. Remember what I told you? You ever feel lost? Just look into the eyes of the people that you love. Not me. What? Just listening.